Arsene Wenger is the Premier League's longest serving manager. He helped to revolutionise not just the Premier League, but football in general. Three time Premier League title winner and, of course, an invincible. Ladies and gentlemen, Arsene Wenger. Arsene, that period of rivalry between the, the two clubs is one of the, the great periods in Premier League history. And at the heart of it was your relationship, your rivalry with Sir Alex Ferguson. And he sent a message uh, this evening saying it's a great honour to be inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame. And I would also like to pass on my congratulations to the former players who've also been inducted. To Arsene, like myself, you understand the unique pressures that come with managing an elite football club a job you did with distinction for over 20 years. Congratulations to you, Petter, Rio and Tony. I hope you all have a great evening. At the heart of it for you was their respect. Respect came in late. <laughs> <laughs> but I came on the 1st of October 96, thanks to David Dean, who had, was crazy enough to bring me in here as completely unknown. And I would like tonight to thank as well... Uh, Pat Rice, who is, was my legendary assistant, you know, and uh, I would like uh, as well to congratulate, of course, Sir Alex Ferguson, who is uh, certainly the greatest manager in, uh, of the Premier League, and the players, you know, uh, Peter Cech, uh, you have uh, heard of your Ferdinand. You had a good uh, combination and example of what the top-level sportsman is. Today, when I'm, I'm out now for four years or five years, I realized that there was an animal, you know, uh, only focused on what is my next drug and uh, sacrificed completely big aspects of my life. And uh, I become a no, uh, normal human being now. <laughs> <laughs> when I came to, uh, to England, it was, uh, I was 47 years old. I came from Japan, was manager of a year, in, but I was unknown. Information didn't uh, travel as quickly as it does today. And uh, so I had a lot of skepticism around me. And I thought, uh, look, is as well a good opportunity to show that I have a level uh, to guide them. And uh, because at the end of the day, a coach is a guide. He tells to a group of people, look, I can help you to win. Trust me. But you have to gain that trust. You brought in all these innovations in the, in the Premier League. You know, the, the mannequins were, were quite new at, at the time. GPS tracking, analysts at the, the training ground, and you had to, to sell to the players that you were going to ban chocolates, which I can't imagine went down <laughs> terribly well. There was no detail too small for, for you to, to yes, care I about. I tried to uh, improve myself as well and uh, to understand where can I, where can I improve. Every single aspect of a top-level life is very important. And uh, why should you practice the whole week and destroy yourself because you eat stupid things, you know, and have a bad game when it matters so much? I try to get the players. In fact, you have to create an environment that helps the players to be as, they, as good as they could be. A performing, a culture of performance, what uh, Ferguson uh, created at Manchester United is that he created a culture inside the club where performance was a necessity. I remember when we lost uh, 99 in the semi final at Villa Park uh, against Man United, the year may made the treble. Dennis Burkamp, Mr. Pinnatin at the time. They never seen them so wild, so, so hungry for success. Because these all these young players were very talented at Manchester United and uh, had a huge hunger to destroy us. And I, I was, it was quite scary how they were after the game when they beat us in the semi-final. And, and when you talk about that, that special hunger, obviously there were players who were already at the club. How did you marry the, the traditions and the, and the, let's call them more old school players because Tony isn't here, <laughs> and, the, and the new breed that, that you brought into the club? When I arrived, uh, I think nine players were over 30 years old. So when you are a manager, you know this is a bomb because they will try to kill you because at some stage you have to tell them you're not good enough anymore. And uh, before they go, they want to kill you. <laughs> so, so I had uh, to extend them as much as I could and uh, slowly replace them. But as well at the start, I added the top players, you know, Thierry Henry, 
Uh, Dennis Burkham was already here. Patrick Vieira, Emmanuel Petit were exceptional football players. So we had uh, these guys were men. They learned football not in, a, in an academy. They learned football by battling in the lower leagues and in the street. And when they told you, don't worry, on Saturday we will do it, they will do it. You know, they're very reliable people. Talking of reliable and more, 2003-2004, that invincible season, at which point did you think this could happen? I said in a, stupidly in a press conference, uh, maybe we could win a championship without losing a game. In 2003, uh, we lost a championship to Man United. And uh, in pre-season, we went away in the training camp and I said to the players, why did we not win uh, the championship? They said to me, because of you. <laughs> and I said, okay, but uh, why? They said, because you put too much pressure on us. So that's where the crucial moment of a manager is. Or you say, okay, sorry, I was wrong. Or you say, but I'm sure you can do it. If you really want it. So I went that way. Top of that all, I discovered what it is to be a manager without any fear. I just traveled to the games, no fear at all to lose, you know, because you, you, you lose the memory of losing games. And the other important uh, interesting factor was that people could raise above their ego. They just wanted to become better as a unit. Because ego looks always for confidence and compares itself to others. What has he more than I have? In the dressing room, that's constant, you know. And uh, so during that period, the, the players could raise above their ego. Could it happen again, do you think? It can. It can. I think you had, after that, you had teams who were as good as we were. Uh, Man United, Chelsea had top teams who could have done it as well. Always when we say Arsen, we think Arsenal. And that, I think, is, is the legacy that you leave at the, at the football club and in the Premier League. Ladies and gentlemen, Arsene Wenger. Thank you. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more. So why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app?